<laughs> you know about all that, girl? We haven't even started yet. <laughs> I'm like, I already got the how you know about that sound bite. We haven't even started the interview. <laughs> okay. Hey guys, before we get into it, I want to thank the sponsor of today's episode, Dinnerly. Dinnerly is a weekly meal subscription plan which makes dinner time easy and affordable. And the process is super simple. You just select the meals that you want each week, they send you all the pre-packaged and pre-measured ingredients, and you just follow along using their easy to read recipe cards. And it really is easy to follow along too because it's not like long paragraphs of like exposition and backstory, it's just easy, concise instructions with pictures. And they have over 100 recipes each week to choose from. Just recently we had seared sirloin steak with shallot pan sauce, roasted potatoes and broccoli, potato chip crusted swai with fries and homemade tartar sauce, and for a dessert, cranberry coffee cake muffins with sticky sweet glaze. And I'm not a chef by any means, but I can honestly say that all the recipes that we made this week were actually good. And even though there was more than enough food for two people, because everything was pre-packaged and measured, there wasn't any food waste. It's easier than meal prepping, cheaper than going out, and more convenient than going to the grocery store, because going to the grocery store is the worst. And if you're not satisfied, you can cancel at any time with no penalties. And right now, we have a special discount for my audience. You can use the link in the description or use my coupon code MADDIE150 to get $150 off your first five boxes with Dinnerly and free shipping on your first box. So make dinner time easy and affordable with Dinnerly. And now, on to the video. Hi guys, welcome back to Give It To Me Straight, a real talk show with real celebrities. And on the show today, we have a TikToker. <laughs> you mocking me? Yes. <laughs> Is this gonna set? Are we setting the? Does the, the tone's gonna be? I'm setting it now. A oh TikToker? Yeah, that's real. A renowned one. A renowned one. We're actually, I was asking you in the car, like, what is your title? And you don't really. You're just kind of a jack of all trades. How all. can you put a title on something that is so close to perfection? Mm -hmm. When you think about like the model human, peak perfection. <laughs> peak performance. Yeah, peak performance. <laughs> Physically, mentally, mm -hmm. you're looking at it. <laughs> Just Why are you laugh. laughing? But for anyone in the audience that doesn't know, which would be shocking, uh, you are a well-known content creator with over a million YouTube subscribers, over 10 million TikTok followers across all your multiple handles. How many handles do you have? Is it just the two? Well, we've like got the two, and then we've got Brosky Report and Royal Court, so four total. Oh, yeah, I wasn't even accounting those. Mm. Those are kind of their own little entities. Mm -hmm. You have Alt1, alt too. No, it's just the two. I am committing TikTok fraud on multiple levels by having <laughs> the same cadence on four accounts. Yeah. Well, I was saying, like, do you have like a secret alt where you're just like, I want to have you it know, have its own little algorithm for I like used to? furry talk or whatever you're oh, in. Hundred percent. No, because I do that publicly and without shame on my on Love mm -hmm. My Marbles. <laughs> it makes me wonder, like, with how much that like, you put out there publicly, like, what are you hiding? You know? Nothing. Truly nothing. I talk about my kicks on my on my podcast. Yeah, like the Robert Downey Jr. vampire fanfic. Uh, okay, so those are two separate ones. <laughs> you know, I wrote a Cole Sprouse fanfiction. Yeah, because you used to have the poster. Was he like the OG, a white boy of the month? No, I used to be a Dylan girl. Cole Sprouse came about in college. Um, oh, and I, okay. I wrote a fanfiction of him in uh, The War. <laughs> so when he started growing like the beard? Yeah. yeah, I was super into that. Girls like Dylan, women like Cole. Women liked Cole. And yep. then he went on Call Her Daddy and smoked a cigarette, and everyone was like, never mind. You know, well, it's better to do it loved and lost, right? <laughs> than do it stand Cole Sprouse. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, on top of all your accomplishments, you've been in Super Bowl ads, you created content for Comedy Central, MTV, made the Forbes list 30 under 30. Oh, congrats to that. Worked with countless celebrities. Yeah. And now you're here. And now I'm here. Peak of the mountain. <laughs> All that to get me here. You made it. Yeah. I did. <laughs> this is an elite club to sit on that chair. It is. Yeah. I'm in good company. It's only been a couple other TikTokers, uh, early out drag queens, and now <laughs> you. <laughs> so. Lovely eighth alternate. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Should so. I spit my gum out? Uh, so it, I'm not. It depends if it's the vibe, you know? I'm going to spit it out. Okay. <laughs> I feel like like I'm how earlier I was complimenting you on how professional you were, <laughs> and then now you're just like, should I spit this gum out? <laughs> At least I'm cognizant of it, you're and you're not like, damn, like I'm glad she was sucking on gum the entire interview. So, I don't want to dwell on the kombucha era too much, because I know you like, already talked about it like in Linked, mm -hmm. but after like Kombucha Gate happened, <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that snowball began. At what point did you decide, like, okay, I'm gonna lean fully into this? Um, when I got fired, probably <laughs> was kind of that decision. 
I got fired from a bank job and I was like, if there was ever a time to try it, it's now. Cause I had just been signed to an agency and it was like, I got my first brand deal and it was like the most money I'd ever seen in my life. It was like $5,000. I was like, is there anyone richer than me you on saw, the planet? <laughs> you saw a comma. You're like, hot damn, I'm uh, moving. No, I, I was like, is there anyone richer? I'm the 1%. You literally went full Beverly Hillbillies and moved to LA. I did. I was like, well, the lease is up. Let's get it, girl. <laughs> moved to LA and I was like, oh, I can't afford my rent, 100%. Mm -hmm. Then all the brand deals started rolling in because it was a pandemic. Mm -hmm. And all the companies started really focusing on digital marketing, especially influencer marketing, because that was kind of the beginning of the end for all that so yeah that was the sort of catalyst but as you said like it cost you your job because of all the memes and stuff but particularly because you worked at a a texas bank you i know, did not the most open-minded and a lot of your memes with the kombucha kombucha girl face facial We're expressions sexual in nature yeah it was gay twitter that was using it for a very inappropriate memes. i would argue with the gays costing you your first job did you ever think maybe grandma was right that really it's really like hard for me mm -hmm. like honestly being in LA is so hard God gives his hardest battles to his slayest soldiers his slayest beefiest mm -hmm. shouldered soldiers yeah it's, he's testing your faith he is uh! <laughs> no it's it's been a blessing mm -hmm. from start to I mean I was gonna say finish but it's not we are in the beginning stages of the empire right now, of the Broski Nation empire oh, we're in the infancy we're in the yeah. infancy um, I'm gonna talk more about that in a little bit because I'm really curious to see where we are in the snowball. Okay. Because you know? it feels like, you know, you're like on top of the world content wise, you know, like all these followers. Thank you. You've literally already, like you said, started an empire. It feels like an empire at this point. Yeah. Based off like a couple stills from, was it even, was it even TikTok or was it still musically back then? No, it was a TikTok. It was a uh, TikTok became TikTok October, 2018. And it only started gaining traction around fall of 2019. Mm. So I posted that in August, 2019. It went viral almost immediately on Twitter because someone downloaded it and uploaded it. And then uh, you're staring at me so intensely, it's freaking me oh, out. Oh, sorry. I'm just <laughs> listening intensely. I'm learning. You did not blink for three minutes. That was oh, crazy. Sorry. <laughs> um, and then, uh, yeah, the, the gays, I really have to thank for it all. So and I'm now going to be like uh, hyper aware of my <laughs> blinking. You got a staring problem. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, but in that in that time period, uh, whenever the kombucha thing happened, and to when you got fired, in that short time period, you were still working while it was happening. Was there anyone at going to the bank recognizing you? No, 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 no one was clocking you. Not a single person. Oh, no, because <laughs> I, I mean, think the bank clientele was probably sixty plus, mm -hmm. like sixty and up. Especially our clients. I worked in trust and investment services, so it's all people like preparing their wills. Mm -hmm. So they're coming in on canes. No one's like, are you from the? No. They're not in the nursing home doing renegade. No, renegade. they're not on God's internet. No. No. <laughs> but since then, you have grown like this really devout following with people within the queer community. Mm. And you've even been tied to a lot of stuff with like Drag Race. Like you worked at DragCon. Mm. You won a Wowie, which is like. <laughs> I was wiping the floors at DragCon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they had you mop it. Yeah, janitorial services. Yeah, yeah. And you want a, you want a can of soup from them. I did want you know, a Wowie. You want a Wowie. I, I, you know, I wasn't even nominated for anything. <laughs> It's just the things I get for putting you bitches on. I, know, I was like hitting, I was doing good on Twitter. I was like on the current season, I was hitting it on Twitter. And like, I didn't even get nominated for best ally. Like you put me on the <laughs> show. I got bullied by all of the Drag Race <laughs> fandom for nothing. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> yeah. But with, with all the Drag Race stuff, how'd you get mixed up with Trixie? How did that kick off? Oh, the worst day of my life. <sighs> the beginning of the end. The beginning of the end. I made a video where I made fun of her. Um, mm -hmm. Did her makeup badly. We did it badly. Oh, you linked up because of that one. Yeah. And uh, she, I tagged her and she DM'd me on Twitter and was like, girl, let me do your makeup. And I said, I'm not Tracy Mattel. <laughs> I literally was like so, I had my little moment where I kind of fangirled because I've been watching Trixie since I was literally 15, 16, like in high school. Like I literally was watching, uh, like watch her season. She was so bad on her season. Yeah. Famously. You were a fan back when she had the blue contacts. Uh, yes. And that bright pink lip. Day one. <laughs> but like, I, I thought she was so funny. And so I've been watching her for so long. When she DM'd me back, I like freaked out and I was like, I'm so cool. I'm actually very normal. And so we went to her house and she did uh, my makeup. And that video to this day is like the most viewed video on her channel. You're welcome.
Trisha. You're f***ing welcome for that. You are an ally. I am an ally. For her. You, you created Trixie Mattel. Without you, she'd, who would she be? And thank you for saying that. Yeah. Thank you for saying that. You heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> and on my channel, too, it's the most, yeah. first, the most viewed videos are of her, so. It's a given, it's a symbiotic relationship. It is. Like a tree and moss or whatever, right? Yeah. Or a, a, like a swamp. A swamp. And an ogre. I don't know. I don't know which one's the ogre. Jason Alexander. <laughs> uh. <laughs> okay, research! That, that's probably one of my favorite of like your videos. Really? Like that one just like, I don't know, it's just, it's a mix of like, you know, Shrek is, Shrek is what it is. I love a good accent, but also too, it's like, I feel like I was a child in that scene before. Yeah. I, if I felt like I was back home, I was transported back to a trailer and just, I was like, I'm pretty sure <clears throat> this has been said to me. Do you need to talk about that? Oh no, I'm, I'm straight, I don't do therapy. <laughs> I'm actually totally fine. Yeah, no, I just repress it. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, I just do this and move on. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> yeah, Trixie's is actually like the one queen that like I, I feel like I resonate the most with, but I've never met her. You've never met Trisha? Mm-mm. I thought y'all had a picture together. Nope. Never done anything together. You took a picture with, not Michelle Visage. Or yes, Ms. Oh, I, I took a picture with Michelle Visage, and someone posted the one that she also took with Michelle Visage in a different time because we were so oh. similar looking. Yeah, people keep comparing us, but never even crossed paths with her. That's so tea. I feel like y'all should have met by now. Mm -hmm. No, she's afraid of me. She that's, sees what I'm, she sees what I'm doing. That's true. Mm -hmm. She sees what you've done yeah. and what you're planning. <laughs> she knows. She's terrified. Yeah. <laughs> she knows. She yep. knows. I just got to find me a Katya and it's over. It's over, bitch. <laughs> Uh, but with all these like ties to Drag Race, when are you actually going to be on the show? Girl, RuPaul, I know you're watching. Mm -hmm. RuPaul, if you will. RuPaul, please. Um, and thank you. Because I would love to. Can I tell you something? Casey Musgraves' look when she was a guest judge. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite looks of all time. That all denim with the big hair and the like blue diamonds. I think about it once a week. I literally, like, if I'm going to go on Drag Race, I'm going to copy that. Mm -hmm. And just act like Casey Musgraves the whole time. Well, I feel like if you went to Drag Race, you could like go there in that outfit, and you could either be a judge or even a contestant. Because what a lot of people don't know is that you actually used to be a drag queen. <laughs> yes. This is a baby drag queen if I have ever seen one. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Suck that in. That what do is. You know about this? I stumbled across that. I was like, Yes, ma'am. That's my Nana's wig. See, you should be. Your Nana's a drag queen. <laughs> She's just a woman. Oh. That's actually when you're not a man and you are uh -huh. you dress like this. That's called being a woman. Oh, yeah. well, it's, it's not even just the hair. It's also like it's the little fur sleeves, the little silk robe. Yeah, it's the little uh, the uh, burlesque like a, moment. Yeah, it's the Mayhem Miller look. Yes. Eyes. <laughs> the Trixie Mattel blue contacts. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, yeah no, that's one hundred percent a drag queen. It is. I feel like um, I have just kind of grown into my eyes a little bit. Because on that photo, mm -hmm. my eyes take up about 48% of my face. Roughly, yeah. Yeah, and now it's about 45. <laughs> and, and growing. We're still... And you know, growing. We're still, <laughs> you know, and ever growing. Your spurt will come soon. <laughs> I'm going to hit my stride. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> what kind of kid were you growing up? Like, were you like a little performer at like a really young age? Or is that like... Um, I think they call it an attention seeker. Was like your family like performers too? No. Oh, it was just you? It's a bunch of... Like, my family's funny. Like, obviously. My... my parents are funny and my siblings are funny and we enjoy laughing um but it's it's very like uh I always was in theater I always like to be the center of attention for our good reasons you know like I I was a child of divorce but I, that may actually be part of it that's my answer mm. I'm a child of divorce and I love attention though. we don't have to digest that I've already processed it paid, yep. the, paid the invoice yep <laughs> yeah. I'm healed <laughs> yeah you see, your mom your mom is a ghost hunter what what is that about? How did that start? Was what that questions like, like, do you have for me about ghost hunting? <laughs> not a whole lot, just like in a vague sense, because like I didn't know like people actually did ghost hunting. I thought it was just like a like a TV gimmick. I don't know if people were actually out here. No girl, with, like the electro scanners and she is. Uh, she doesn't do a lot of house calls, but she is part of the Southeastern Texas Paranormal Research Team, um, a self-funded and grown collective. No one's sponsoring them. It's just my mom and some of her friends. And uh, just a bunch of paranoid people that met at a PTA. Just a bunch of paranoid people who uh, have money to blow. Yeah. And <laughs> she just um, stood up at a at a HOA meeting. And was like, "Is there? <laughs> are we going to talk about the ghosts in this neighborhood? <laughs> Who's doing anything about the damn ghosts?" <laughs> and uh, yeah, she's got the like EMF detectors and the divining rods and 
all the equipment that they use on uh, what's Zach Baggins' show, Ghost Adventures, whatever it's called. I, I don't know the name of the show. I went to his museum in Vegas, though. Period. And yeah. he is hot, by the way. Zach Baggins, hit my line if you want me. Mm. Um, you Zach Baggett. Zach Baggett. <laughs> you know what? Ew. Um, <laughs> uh, no, yeah, she's got all the equipment, and she does like. Uh, haunted jails and asylums and old hospitals in like southeastern Texas, all over Texas. And she goes to uh, cons. She goes to like Alien Con okay, and like stuff ghost like that. Cons and stuff. Yeah, she oh loves it. It's it's like real. I I am a skeptic, but I have been on some expeditions with her, I and I will if she say took you on runs. I will say I've been on a few runs. When you're in the room with her and they're doing everything, and you have the equipment set up, and it's quiet, and it's dark, and you start asking questions, and the thing starts fucking beeping, I will say it's chilling. It's it's chilling. I don't know what the fuck it is. I don't know if it's the sort of human desire for there to be something else. Mm-hmm. Um, if it's wishful thinking, I don't know. But I, I've been there, and I'm a skeptic, and I'm still like, I can't explain some of the stuff that we've seen. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I'm someone that's always been a skeptic, but I also like don't want to put myself in a situation where I might be proven wrong. 100%. Because if ghosts are real, it's kind of terrifying. Well, you're like, I don't want to know about it. Mm-hmm. You're like, leave me alone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I, I, I much rather like to live in the comfort of like, I hear a noise, I'm like, oh, it's probably a bird or the wind. Yeah. Or an attack that fell off the wall. I don't want to like, There's to nothing scarier than the unknown. Yeah. I don't want to know it. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I don't want to, like, hear a noise be like, oh, it's probably a bird, and then a machine beeps and says it's not. I yeah. don't need that in my life. Yeah. That's too stressful. And then it's like, you know, a girl died here in 1981. She was murdered. And it's like, mm-hmm. well, didn't need to know that, did I? Because mm-hmm. I was fine here before. Why are the ghosts always Victorian people? Why is there not, like... Uh, have you seen that tweet that's like, the ghosts of kids who died today are going to be so unserious. Like, they're going to haunt someone in 50 years, and it's going to be a kid, like, doing the stanky leg in the hallway and then disappearing. <laughs> Like, ran a gay. Ran a yeah. <laughs> like, do the doggy in the hallway and then, like, disappear. You're just going to look back on it and it's just going to be, like, so chilling. Like, well, the, I couldn't explain the movement. It was so weird. It was so, it was so violent and jerky. Girl, that's his stinky leg. <laughs> like, the jerk? <laughs> the jerk. <laughs> yes, he was jerking. Speaking of your family, you grew up in a really Christian conservative family in Texas. But since then, you've drifted kind of further away from organized religion and mm-hmm. expressed a lot more, like, left-leaning ideals. Is that something that started back when you were still in Texas, or was it after leaving to L.A. that you became a dirty commie? Damn, girl, this is a serious interview now, huh? Dirty commie is so true. <laughs> um, I'm comrade Broski. <laughs> it started way, way early. I mean, I was doing vacation Bible school in middle school and high school, and I was, was like... this early? Yeah, well, <laughs> not that early. But I... I it was early enough where I was expressing doubt in my faith and I was being told by higher ups in the church that doubt is normal, but don't sit in it. Cause I remember I was in vacation Bible school one time and I asked one of the ladies who was like a volunteer. I was probably like nine years old. I said, how do you know that the Bible's true? Like, how do you know that people didn't just lie and write it down? And she was like, well, because I believe. And I was like, but what if, Okay, so you're not answering my question. What if people lied when they wrote this? And she was very dismissive of my question. And then the older I get, I realized she didn't know. Because that's a very valid question. That is a historical text. How do we know that it's not lies? Or that it's not meant to be taken literally? I don't know. It was just very like, I started expressing those doubts very early on. It wasn't until I got to college that I was like, f*** all this. Because I met so many different people from so many different walks of life. And I was like, there is more than... First Baptist Church, you know, and moving out of L.A. or moving out of Texas really solidified it. And to my family, it feels like, you know, L.A. is the cause for it, when in reality, it's kind of what solidified it. Because that that seed had been growing for years. So, I don't know. It's a very, everyone relates to that. You know, if you grew up in a very conservative household and you're the black sheep, that's not, I'm not the first person to experience that. Yeah. So... I don't know, it's been kind of healing to have that sort of support online that I never was afforded as a child. Mm -hmm. To be like, you're actually valid in what you're thinking. Mm -hmm. And you're not living wrongfully because of what you think. Yeah. It's also hard, too, because gospel music kind of slaps. Gospel music slays, bitch. It's so... Mm -hmm. Hillsong United? Get into it. Mm -hmm. For me, it's uh, Never Would Have Made It. Mm. 
I, uh, what do you know about uh, Lead Me to the Cross? Oh, it's a, it's a Take Me to the King. Take Me to the King, yup, yeah. yup. Uh, Oceans, it's a great one. I don't think I know that one. Some good bands. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just whipping through traffic. Yeah. Sometimes it's Charlie XCX. Sometimes it's him. Sometimes it's a tambourine and an organ. Yeah. And that'll do it. <laughs> Let him use you. Let, I'm a vessel, girl. I'm, I am but a vessel. <laughs> so, but with the views that you express online and uh, the audience that you've created also being more left-leaning, do you ever worry about alienating your audience whenever they find out that you're actually a blind patriot America stand? <laughs> no, because that shirt had glitter on it, girl. <laughs> That, that sounds like a stretch. This girl was at the Capitol. I saw her. <laughs> this is... What? I'm a... I'm a, a, a pa- or no, wait. Let me see that. This picture said America first. This picture said build the wall. <laughs> to count the vote. Count the... Re- Stop the count! <laughs> and I can't believe I'm a traitor because I heart USA. Yeah. Have you ever had a Chicago dog? So, have dog. a Chicago dog and tell me you don't heart USA as well. That's fair. That's you dog. need a Portillo's Chicago dog. Yeah. <laughs> I heart USA. <laughs> yeah, you know what? Maybe we are the greatest country. <laughs> Maybe we are. Dude, I went to uh, Spain this summer, and I literally, every time I'd be like, can we have water? Water! They don't drink water in Europe. Mm-hmm. Like, ever. We would go, and they would bring these little tiny glasses, like, you want water? Here you go. And it was warm, and I was like, I want to go back to... America and I want to go to Sonic and I want to Route 44 ice water bitch with lemon. And I did. As you should. What do they drink over there? The wine. Like, oh, it's just wine. Wine and Coke. They're living like they're still shitting in the like sewer and that's their drinking water. They yeah. don't drink water. My grandma was right about that too. Them damn Europeans. But between the content you post and also like the ideals that you put out there, I feel like there is this duality to your online presence, which can be summed up in two tweets. Okay. Um, one in 2020, you said the powers that be will never condone your method of protest, no matter what it looks like, because you are protesting the world in which they are most comfortable. Keep going, change is coming. And shortly after that, you tweeted, green beans, <laughs> with a smiley face emoji with sunglasses. <laughs> and I feel like that really sums up like who you are. <laughs> As, as an internet figure. Those are the two. Yeah, it just says green beans. Hell yeah. It wasn't even responding to anyone. It was just, <laughs> it was a straight up tweet. Yeah. Yeah. This is green beans. I was probably necking some of those sesame seed, like garlic green uh-huh. beans. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they were busted, busted. <laughs> to the point where I was like, I need to share this with everyone. Mm-hmm. But it was a, wait, what's the time on there? It's December, so it's probably you probably just left like Thanksgiving. You're yep. still thinking about that casserole. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, those are the two uh, inside of you are two wolves. <laughs> that's that's those are my wolves. Those are the two wolves. Yeah, is the revolution will not be televised and green bean. Have you seen the one where it says uh, inside you there are two wolves and then someone put furry <laughs> <and> <laughs> on by two wolves? <laughs> yeah, that's also me. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> the duality of man. The, the, tr- the triality of man. The triality, because you'll try anything, won't exactly. it? Exactly. <laughs> 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 but uh, with like modern day like virality and like, do you think it's more of a net positive or net bad in that like, it's more accessible than ever, but at the same time I feel like people almost feel a sense that they have to have like a brand, that people have almost a pressure to create content. When you say virality, what do you mean by that? Like the ability to go viral. Like, because whenever I was a kid, it seemed like the only people that were famous were people that were in major movies or TV shows. Mm-hmm. But now it can be anybody off the street with a camera in their room. Mm-hmm. Well, I think that true virality has been lost because the internet's just too damn big now. Mm-hmm. In the early days of YouTube, there were so few creators because there were only so many people on the app. And out of those people on the app, there were only so many people posting on the app. It was easy to go viral. You know, like you post a video and everyone has seen it because there's not that many videos. In the early days of TikTok, it was similar. There were not that many people. There were some dead accounts from Musical.ly that heard, you know, like you could have all these followers, but no one's watching. To post a video and get 40,000 likes overnight, everyone on the app had seen it. You can't do that anymore. You get 40,000 likes, that means literally nothing no one's seen it so when you consider over a billion active users on tiktok i think the true definition of viral meaning everyone has seen it this is a viral video 
I don't think that's true anymore. You can't do that. You can have a successful, popular video, but it's not viral. It's kind of like the argument that people said that we'll never have like another true pop star because people will have hit songs, and but no one will have like the status of like a Michael Jackson or you know real like pop stars where everyone in the world mm. knows who this person is. I don't know if that's true. Music is a completely different entity than I think social media videos. You know, like, and, and what's the goal? Are you making art or are you making funny videos with the intent to go viral? Mm -hmm. I don't know if I wouldn't compare the two. Um, well, you're wrong. Okay, period. <laughs> okay, no, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you actually work kind of like on the tail end of like one of the last like people online to really like go viral, mm. like to be like worldwide because like. With like the stills from like your meme, it's like no matter what language it was, like everyone knew like to recognize the face and stuff. Mm -hmm. It's like you were like you were the Michael Jackson of the internet, essentially. Yeah. Me and Michael Jackson, we're twins. We're you know, and I keep saying that, and people are just like, I don't see it, and it's just like really um, invalidating sometimes. Mm -hmm. I see you. You were seen. You were valued. You were gassed up. You were gassed lit. But I've talked about with some other creators before, but with like being online, especially as you like putting so much out there, like where do you draw the line between? Britney the person and Britney like the content creator. Mm. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. There is no line. I have a problem with it. Um, what I choose to share is me. Uh, there's not a character, you know, and, and the one separation I do have is like my government name versus Britney Broski, but there's no fucking difference in mm. personality. Of course, Britney Broski, when the camera's on, is a little bit amped up, but like, I'm this way in real life, you know, with my friends. And, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't really, and, and it gets me into trouble because I don't have boundaries in my life. So, yeah. But with, like, putting everything out there, like, do you find it more, like, stressful just knowing that everyone knows everything about you? Or is it almost, like, liberating just having everything, wearing your heart on your sleeve? A little bit of both. I can't take it back. So here yeah. we are, <laughs> you know? For better or worse. Yeah. But something that I found with even the modern come of fame that I have is that like the more you gain traction online, the more people feel like they know you mm -hmm. and get comfortable with you. And while it's one thing for your friends to kind of read you, it's another thing where complete strangers on the internet to just blatantly insult you, thinking mm -hmm. they're being cute. Mm -hmm. <laughs> is it just like daunting like every day? Mm, you're, I get used to it. Like, like you get used to it. I think that when you understand that, that these people just love you so much, mm -hmm. they don't know how to approach it because they watch you every day. In their minds, you are their best friend. You know, you are a part of their daily routine. They're seeing you as much as they're seeing their real friends. Mm -hmm. When you consider that, through that lens of how people choose to talk to me in my DMs, I don't get I'm not offended, you know. Mm -hmm. It hurts sometimes, especially in the early days when people would be like, yes, fat queen. <laughs> I was like, so why'd you say that? So you didn't have to say all that. Yeah. You know, you could have just been like, love the look. <laughs> yeah. But you chose to say, yes, fat queen. Obsessed with it. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I think that it's people don't know how to uh, be normal after the pandemic. Or just in general. It broke everyone. It broke everyone down to the atomic level. So I don't know. I think I, I just, I don't, I'm not mad at it. It's part of it. That's me. Like anytime someone <laughs> says like, I think they're trying to be flattery. They're like, oh my God, you look so much like this celebrity. And it's always someone, it's the most, it's, it's the most like bland, Victorian, soft, egg-faced person. <laughs> or it's grew from Despicable Me. Yep. I'm like, my nose is not even that big. <laughs> like, what is this? Yeah, I used to get Rebel Wilson a lot. Mm. Pre weight loss, and I was like, okay, <laughs> okay. At least it wasn't like Rebel Wilson and Cats. It was, yeah, literally, it was Rebel Wilson and Pitch Perfect. I was like, period. Yeah. <laughs> hey, she was funny. Y'all take it. I think they mean well, but it's like y'all are saying some foul shit. Yeah. And, and it's okay sometimes if it's like really funny. Of course. But then even if it is funny, a hundred other people make the exact same joke over and over. And well, girl, like, they said I look like the yellow Eminem. I laughed. Yeah. Like that's the first time. Funny. The first time. And then, girl, the latest one that they just latch on and they don't know how to end it is on, um, what was it, a YouTube video? Trixie said, uh, Madonna stuns a new selfie. Mm -hmm. She was like, I can't stop saying it. Every fucking video I post, every, Madonna stuns a new selfie. And it's me, like, shitting on mm -hmm. the toilet. Madonna stuns a new selfie. Every video, it's been four months. Hey, not funny. It's hey, give now. it up. Yeah. Hey, mm -hmm. I'm blocking you and reporting your account. Yeah. It's just not, they don't know when to let it go, and it's like, 
whatever, you know. I, my comment section is so funny, but even my fans will get annoyed at that. They're like, not funny. <laughs> they're like, <laughs> not funny. And they're, they're like, sorry. For me, it was like whenever the first time someone made a joke about um, that I was going to lip sync to Nickelback, I was like, that's so funny. And then they kept saying it, like, I oh, can't wait to see the Nickelback lip sync. It's like, all it's right. Like, Can you stop? Leave me alone. Please stop. I don't want to play no more. <laughs> I don't like playing with you. But speaking of parasocial relationships, for those that aren't familiar, a big integral part of the Brittany Broski lore is the White Boy of the Month. Absolutely. Which, which as of lately has been Hozier, and we've had past entries such as Harry Styles, famously, of Gerard Butler, you know, to name a few. But um, Austin Butler. Oh, did I say Gerard Butler? You oh, bitch. what the? F you bitch. <laughs> Why is it Gerard Butler? I, don't know. I have not thought about Gerard Butler in I don't even know how many years. Well, Freudian slip. It even says Austin here. <laughs> Just thinking about him. You're like, no, Gerard Butler is out in the other room. <laughs> Call it off. Today's special. <laughs> kill it, kill it. Don't send it. Keep Gerard out there. <laughs> Take him to Taco Bell. Get him out. <laughs> Put him back in the waiting room. But in the past, you've had heavy hitters such as Austin Butler. Mm. Harry Styles, and again, most recently, Hozier. Mm -hmm. With the obsession with white boys and them being the ticking time bombs that they are, <laughs> do yep. you ever worry about latching yourself onto them via, like, little fish on the shark type vibe and them just... All the f***ing time, girl! <laughs> the constant fear you it have. It is literally, I feel like I have a bomb strapped to my chest. Mm -hmm. If I'm like, oh, I think I like this one, and then he says some crazy shit online, I'm like, no! But I, that's a fear with liking anyone. You know? That's true. People have that fear about me. You go on a Tinder day, don't realize they're a neon until it's too late. Until you're married with three kids. Yeah. <laughs> so what happened to you? Yeah, yeah I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> I'm getting the tattoo removed tomorrow. It's, it's fine. Expensive uh, procedure. I know. It, it, how far back can you go? Like, who is the OG white boy of the month, if you can remember? Like in my life or on TikTok? Both. On TikTok? TikTok is documented. If we don't know that one, someone will find it for us. Yeah, someone could find the first ever white boy I talked about. But like, who are you? Who was the first like Wattpad entry or doodle you made in a notebook about someone? Well, like the first ever in my life where I was like, whoa, was Ash from Pokemon. <laughs> I was about six years old and I was like, what's going on down here? And then the older I got, it was like High School Musical, like Zac Efron. Mm. And then it was... Dylan and Cole Sprouse. Mm -hmm. And then from there, when I was in high school, I was like, what's a DILF? D-I-L-F. Then that entered a whole era. Yeah. Matt Damon, Robert Downey Jr. World. Whole new world. Mm -hmm. um, and then Tumblr just kind of rotted my brain in ways that I am still processing. Still recovering from. Yep, still recovering. It's like PTSD. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of like Benedict Cumberbatch and Tom Hiddleston and all of those. So like... The sort of, we moved on from preteen, teenager white boys to like heavy hitters. We're talking 35 to 50. Mm -hmm. So that was, uh, yeah, that's mm -hmm. where I'm at right now. So when you were a kid, it's like Nemo was the go-to. And then as you get older, it's like the one like with the, the fish with the Gil. scars. Gil, yeah. She, yep. she's, the taste changed. You mature, your palate has matured. My palate is refined. I, I don't drink those hugs in the little barrels anymore. I drink wine. I drink wine. And nice. Pinot Grigio. Yeah, and Hosier is the Pinot Grigio of white men. I would say it's. A, I, I love him in ways where words fail me. Mm -hmm. At least right now, because by the time this video comes out, <laughs> if I've been moved on. Yeah. This is gonna be just. I'm just gonna be trudging up stuff about like an ex. Is what it's gonna feel <laughs> like. Because you'd be like, I've already moved on. I've... No, I can never move on from him. He's one of the Eternals. Mm. There are a few Eternals. Okay. Like Harry is one of them. Mm -hmm. Hosier is one of them. Um, um, and then there's some women too, like Rosalia. Beyonce, those are Eternals for mm -hmm. yes. You have a Rosalia tattoo, I just noticed. I do! For a split second, I thought, I thought it was my logo. I was like, what the f***? I was like, oh, I know, it's the Moto Mommy logo. I'm like, hiding my Maddie Morphosis tattoo and like, yeah. pulling my sleeve down. Like, That's embarrassing. <laughs> it's awkward. Yeah. What's your favorite tattoo? The side conversation. Uh, my favorite tattoo, I've got the SpongeBob jellyfish. Oh, shit, you do. Uh, my favorite one is probably, I love my Mickey Mouse. It's a classic. Is that like one of your first ones? Yeah, one of my first, like, five. <laughs> and then I've got these little tiny people right here. Oh, they're just little people? Yeah, little people with shadows. That's a cool one. Probably my Arbel one. Arbel's a very famous tattoo artist in L.A. She does, like, photorealistic stuff. Mm -hmm. She did my Coca-Cola. What's your least favorite tattoo? My least favorite? I kind of, like, 
was having an episode and I wanted to get a tattoo from this artist named Tuesday on Instagram who I've been following since I was in high school. And mm. I was like, I'm going to get a Tuesday tattoo. And I went in and I got it right on my f***ing wrist. I don't regret it, but I looked mm. down and I'm like, why did I put it there? Mm -hmm. It's just like a d demon and an angel having wine. Mm -hmm. It's like cute, and I love his art style. It's like super funky, but like, why did I do it there? Do you think? Are, are your tattoos just on the arms? Yeah, here up. No, just on the yeah, yeah from the gooch up. You, <laughs> you really wear it all on your sleeve. Yeah, I do. Sick. I don't have any tattoos. My I get, my body is a temple. Body is a wonder. <laughs> See, bitch, your body's candy land. You have diabetes. Yeah. <laughs> that will go down as one of the greatest quotes of the last. Mm -hmm. 10 years. Yeah, people will be quoting that. It's going to be, it's like, that's our Aristotle. That know? is. A... Um, but with your uh, White Boys of the Month, what's your batting average on actually meeting them? Because, like, you've, you've met, like, Hozier, <laughs> Harry question. Styles. Greta Van Fleet. Greta Van Fleet. Basil Bluma. Like, what's the percentage, do you think? That's actually a crazy question. Pretty f***ing high. Mm -hmm. I was this close to meeting Austin Butler. <laughs> Wait, I've never talked about this. I was this close to meeting Austin Butler. I got invited to... When Elvis came out last year, uh, Baz Luhrmann threw a birthday party for Austin Butler and Elvis, like, to celebrate whatever, ce celebrate Elvis. And it was at this cafe that was, like, really close to my house, and I got invited. I was like, holy shit. And so I called my friend, and I was like, should we go dressed as Elvis? <laughs> That's a great first impression. This is like a room with studio execs, Austin Butler, like Kaya Gerber was probably going to be there. Mm -hmm. Like everyone in the movie I think was going to be there. You show up looking like you're going to a costume party. We literally were like, like I bought sideburns. Like I was fully committed. Like on Amazon, Elvis plus size women's like 3XL Elvis costume. I got two in case one didn't work. And last minute I was like, we can't do this. Girl, we can't do this. And my friend was like, you're right. So now I have two Elvis costumes in my closet because I was like, I'm not going to show up to an Elvis birthday party with Baz Luhrmann and Austin Butler dressed as f plus size, mid size Elvis. How often do you back out of ideas? Because I feel like you kind of just throw stuff out there. I don't know. That one just felt a little too like, what are we doing? <laughs> hey, let's take a step back. <laughs> uh, but I already had the costume. Like I Amazon primed it. No, it, but that was you're, that. You're staring at two Elvis costumes getting existential. Like, what am I doing? <laughs> I was like... What decisions have I made that led me here? Where I'm like, I'm, the Grinch thing, I'm not going. Yeah. I, yeah, I didn't go. What if that was it? Well, that, that was your meet cue. But not. <laughs> I've met every, pretty much every other white boy of the month I've talked about, which is psycho. That's, but that, that, that's also not on you, you know? Other people are aiding you in this. You're not it's like, very you're, true. you're not in DMs and making moves. I also, I'm not stupid girl. I'm talking about these people and their teams are like, this is good press. Mm -hmm. You know, like, I'm not stupid. I know that they're benefiting from it, too. Mm -hmm. But, like, I'll benefit from it all day. I will suckle that teat mm -hmm. all day. Yeah, so sometimes it's like, yeah, use me. You Let him me. use you. Let, I am a vessel. I'm a vessel. Mm -hmm. I need to, like, my eyes are watering. I got really emotional about the Elvis story. As someone <laughs> with an Elvis costume, it just Something got to me. really struck you. I cannot fathom being as busy as you are. Every time I see you, you're doing like some other stuff. I was like, how do you have time I to shit post on TikTok? I literally like don't. I don't know how I did. Sometimes it's like I get the zoomies. That's what it is. I start zooming out. And uh -huh. I'm like, I have to post seven TikToks. And then I won't post for a month. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> just a little into the creative process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But on the topic of your white boys of the month, you are single at the moment. But what is it like dating as a celebrity? Like, do you just, are you like exclusively? Non-existent. Non-existent? I am so horny I could hump the fucking leg of a table. <laughs> it is criminal. What other questions do you have for me? <laughs> I was just going to ask, like, do you normally try to look like on, on Raya, like celebrity dating? Or do you like go full Jasmine hood up in the streets with the peasants? I'm full Jasmine with my tiger in the streets. But my tiger is just my vibrator. <laughs> so it's literally like, I'm not on Raya. They've waitlisted me. You got waitlisted? You yeah, Raya? girl. For the last four years, I've been waitlisted on Raya. Anytime I hear about people like on Raya, it's always like an actual celebrity. They're like, oh, yeah, I met this other person. And they're like a D-list tennis player. I'm like, I how did you that, get on Raya? No, I want a normal ass dude. Mm -hmm. I want like a soft-spoken, shy, because I am, in all senses of the word, overbearing. Mm -hmm. um, so I need someone who's like soft and shy and will let me shine and will support me. And then I can support him.
You want someone to weigh you, anchor you down. <coughs> yeah, I need hosier. <coughs> yeah, just a shy. Someone who doesn't want the limelight. He's not really comfortable on a stage, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, you know, studio artist. Yes. Yeah. I need a, yeah, a studio uh, a musician. But speaking of which, when are you going to get in the studio? Because, like, if some of your TikToks and stuff, like, you got pipes. Like, you're actually, like, a, a decent well. singer. Thank you. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Soon. Oh, you have plans for it? Yeah, maybe. Drop in the studio album. Are you perform? Are you gonna perform under the Britney Broski, or is that something you're gonna use? Probably government? Broski. Because why invent a new character? Mm -hmm. Like this is it, girl. Yeah. It's not much more under the hood. <laughs> well, I'm some, kind of popped open the hood. Yeah. Well, some people are like, well, I'm going more serious. So I'm gonna use my government name for this nah, or a different moniker. Because also, when you do that, it's like you lose people. Don't know that's you. Mm -hmm. You might go out as or just Britney. Like, who gives it? It'll be Britney Broski. I don't know. I think that it'll be the music when it happens. Mm -hmm. um, Do you have a song in your heart or are you just kind of, is it just a vague idea right it's now? It's a sound, but it's very, I'm very hyper aware of the cringe of internet musicians. Mm -hmm. But on the flip side, the success of internet musicians like Troy Sivan, Shawn Mendes, those people came from Vine and YouTube. You know, like it is possible if you're very talented and you're very smart about it. Mm -hmm. So I have a very fantastic team behind me. And when it does happen, it'll be right. It'll be the perfect song. It'll be the sort of Ethel Kane meets Hosier meets Chris Stapleton mm -hmm. blend of, you know, I love country music, but I don't want to make country music. Yeah. So, but I love soul music. So I don't know. I think it'll be, it'll be really uh, creatively liberating for me when it does happen. So you're not going to do like parody covers and stuff like that. You're like going to be like a serious, it's going to be such like a juxtaposition where you're yeah. just like, Online doing that, arr, 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 and yeah, then you're just but like, the podcast helps, you know, because I'm online not really doing mm -hmm. uh, pee pee blood fart stuff anymore. Yeah. It's very like, uh, it's a real day in a little bit. Yeah, I'm kind of talking about God. <laughs> <laughs> that's it, that's the podcast. At, at if you guys haven't seen it, yeah. It's called The God Report, starring me, yeah. <laughs> Brittany Brophy. I haven't seen like more uh, little snippets like pop up on my timeline, and I was like, I was like, oh, I didn't know she was going deep, deep with this, like this yeah, content. Girl, we we get deep into it's the weeds. Me, it's me. Yeah, and I'm alone in a room. Yeah, we. Go, <laughs> it's just another another white person with a podcast yeah. yelling at the camera. Because what they said is they they don't want a white woman to have a podcast, and I said, watch me, okay? Be the change you want to see in the world. <laughs> You're the Gandhi of the internet. People say that about you. And you know what? The ripple effects are still being felt today. Mm -hmm. of the impact I'm making. Yeah. <laughs> I, they're, they're being felt today as you're actively putting them out. Like it's, <laughs> I'm like every Tuesday. Yeah. People are going to talk about this for minutes. Yeah. At yeah. least minutes. Yeah. <laughs> it's my honor and privilege. Until they scroll to the next video. <laughs> exactly. Seconds even. Mm -hmm. <laughs> whenever like, because like whenever you post uh, singing videos on like TikTok, I like a lot of them are kind of like covers and like your own little versions of songs. So I was mm -hmm. like, is it going to be like original song? Or is she going to go like the Susan Boyle route of just like taking other people's songs and put a whole ass orchestra behind? I think a, like a cover of like an, an indie alt country blues version of a Harry Styles song would be kind. Mm -hmm. Like I think that would be a really cool way to kind of be like, here's actually something tangible that is streamable and like is a cover on a YouTube channel or mm -hmm. something like that. So, to kind of palette it for people yeah. before it's like, here's my single, go stream it. Because it's like, ugh. Something to, yeah, yeah, get it wet first. You know, you got to. You got to get them excited. Yeah. You got to hit that on the on the track. I'm going to hit it's that It's going to be a dubstep track. album. That's actually going to be uh, beatbox, dubstep, uh, yeah, oh, shit. EDM. Well, you probably could because you are like, you are very multifaceted. So I would not be surprised. What'd you call them? Multifaceted. Oh. <laughs> you... <laughs> But as I said, you are like multifaceted. So like singing, I can see that for you. You, you uh, have made such like you're creating an empire for yourself, and you're an award-winning actress. Whenever you won Best Supporting Role as Grandma in the Adams <laughs> Family, my Kelly Award, girl. Yes, <laughs> you won for your your Give debut role. <laughs> what do you bitches know about my acting career? When you're in Adams. Off, off, off Broadway. Yeah, so far off Broadway. Very off Broadway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, bitch, I was a, a musical theater kid. You mm. would never know it, though, because I'm not obnoxious about it. No, 
No, you're very like. You you're, agree? Yeah, you're not. You're not really like outgoing and you know. Loud and... <laughs> you don't really demand attention. No. You no. Think you're saying that about me. Yeah, I think you're more of like a FBLA type kid. You know, just kind of quiet. More like a like a tech bro. Yeah, yeah. I'm just good like behind my little computer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Twitter fingers. <laughs> Um, what's the uh, full disclosure? Is that what that was the song? Full disclosure. Yeah. <laughs> Hate it. Well, it, it didn't break your acting stride too much because you have expressed an interest in like voice acting. Yeah. It's, it's like what's what's like your what's your, your dream role? Because you talked about wanting to be like in a like Disney Pixar film is like yeah. in goal. What's like your dream character, and why is it a love interest for Doc Hudson? <laughs> Because Doc Hudson is sexy. Mm-hmm. What other questions do you have for me? Whenever you Googled Hudson? did Dilf, was that the first one that popped up? Yeah, he's up there. Yeah. <laughs> he's definitely up there. You know what else? The sheriff is hot too, but f- 12. Yeah. I'm not a bootlicker. The old Britney. Yeah. If, the you're, old. if you were still working at the bank, you'd be into the sheriff. I'd be f***ing a cop. But you would. Be- <laughs> <laughs> I'd be a cop f***er. <laughs> I was still working at the bank. Lick them boots. <laughs> like I'd be licking them boots. Man. Yeah, <laughs> but instead, you know, you're a uh, you know takes a dirty comedy. You moved to L.A. And I uh, am. You know, big stars like Doc Hudson. And now I am so overrun with estrogen. I could literally imp- like mm-hmm. I could be the next Virgin Mary, <laughs> immaculate conception. It's just a car. It's a Hot Wheel. It is. It's over, bitch. Let him use you. <laughs> <laughs> but what's been your favorite character that you've done so far? Like all your little skits and stuff. Again, like for me, it was like Shrek's wife. But like right. of all these like little skits, the alien, like general horny girl. Like what's been like your favorite one? You're like that was a good one. <laughs> I did this bit <laughs> during the end of the pandemic. I made myself a giggle. I did this bit during the end of the pandemic where for every video I would use <laughs> Neon Moon by Brooks and Dunn. At the very beginning, the I would do that, and I had this robe, and I had this fake cigarette, and these Elton John sunglasses, and I was just like, I looked like the woman in the trailer park who always hung out outside Mm -hmm. and would yell at her kids and like would just be gone. Yeah, smoked American spirits. Yes. Yeah. And uh, she's got the the lines, the smoker lines. Mm -hmm. I did that character, and I used the song so much that my Followers started to be like triggered by it. Like they would hear it, they'd be like, it's another f- Britney video. <laughs> I post like five in a night of me like sitting like this, smoking my fake cigarette, like POV, he left me. <laughs> like POV, I'm yelling at my kids outside of the trailer park and you caught me and I yell at mm-hmm. you or something like that. I did probably about 40 of those videos. Mm-hmm. That's my favorite character I've ever done because it got so annoying. Uh-huh. That's what made it funny. Yeah. Well, with all these characters, like with Trek's wife, that one, like yeah. a lot of them are kind of rooted in the people we grew up with, like the yeah. certain women. And I think it's why, like, I was like so drawn to like your content specifically because I you felt I felt seen because I was like, I also like when I do characters, a lot of them are kind of countryish characters. Yeah, I was that kid that like because everyone around me loved country, I hated country. Gotta be I, it wasn't about that life, but as a character, I'm like. Shit kind of goes off. Well, as a character, there's so much to work with. Mm -hmm. Like, it is so funny. Like, the women that, yeah, I grew up with, and I'm sure you did too, they're such characters. Mm -hmm. It's like, I'm not even really acting. I'm just, like, mimicking. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, like, for the people, like, oh, it's so such a funny character. It's like, no, that woman, I'm related you see to that them. Woman. Yeah, that's literally just your mom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's not a joke. Yeah. I did another one where I was, like, the woman you don't want to sit next to on a plane. And I, I, <laughs> I was, like, a southern woman. Then I was sitting down, and I had the neck pillow, and I was, like, I had my, my uh, sleep mask on. I said, hey, when I come around here with them snacks, will you wake me up? <laughs> And I did one of those, and then I said, uh, um, are you going to finish your eyes? Can I chew on it? <laughs> like, just being really annoying. Yeah. And uh, that one got good traction. But it's like, <laughs> I've sat next to that woman. Mm-hmm. She's real. Is there any characters you did that didn't stick, and you're like, well, that's disappointing? Yeah, a bunch. But like, <laughs> with, most of them? With TikTok, Anyone that wasn't a Southern woman. Well, I mean, with TikTok, it's pump and dump. You know, it's like, mm-hmm. I don't really, if they failed, I don't even remember what I did. Like, you're mm-hmm. bringing up shit I didn't even know I talked about. You know, it's like, mm-hmm. I have the memory of a goldfish. <laughs> so that's really actually great when you think about your digital footprint. But with, with everything you've done, like what do you want to do next? Because you started a new podcast, but like with again with the empire you're building, like what are the goals you have in mind? Music is definitely part of it. I would love to be a form of a sort of um, what Olaf was to Frozen, you know, like that sort of like com- comedic relief animated character mm. um, in a Disney Pixar film. 
I'd love to have a role like that eventually. I'd like to do what... I thought you were saying that as like a metaphor for like what you were doing for a minute. Like, no. I want to be a singer and be like the Olaf in Frozen. No, I, was like, I was like, what does that mean? There was a comma in between those two. I was trying to... Okay, I was trying to follow it. I was like, okay, I'm, I'm with it. Carry the water. Okay, never mind. No, back, back on. Yeah, there was a comma. Yeah. <laughs> um, and here's another comma. Um, I'd also like to do stuff like uh, what Zane Lowe does for Apple Music. Are you familiar? Not with what he's doing for Apple Music. No. You have got to be more involved in the interviewer space. I don't want to... You are an interviewer. You need to know who Nardwar is. You've got to know who Sean Evans is and who Zane Lowe is. Mm -hmm. You know that saying? Yep. Okay. Um, gay. So uh, <laughs> I think that I'd love to do something like what, what Zane Lowe does with Apple Music where he sits down with artists who have albums coming out and he really dives headfirst into it. And they're thoughtful and considerate interviews where these musicians don't want to talk about tell me about da, da, da. Zane's asking like really deep and personal meaningful questions you know like yeah. it's a very intentional interview and I really love that and respect that um, so I'd like to do that with musicians one day as mm -hmm. well but I think that's because I, I love music so deeply you basically like all the the batting average <laughs> success you have with a white boy of the month you're gonna weaponize that to create a, a new interview podcast to make money yeah that's what it's about at the end of the day that's what it's all about it's at the end money. of the day when you really think about it and in conclusion yeah it's like am i happy no do i enjoy my life no, no. am i making money bet your ass well, i'm gonna start the interview show with the sole purpose of finding a white man of the month and mm -hmm. locking him down mm, contractually contractually yeah <laughs> Do you have any more like vague goals though, like stuff you kind of see on the horizon that you have any plans for? Stuff you might want to explore? I'd like to write a fantasy novel. Fantasy novel? Yeah. Like, I don't know like high fantasy, it. like dragons and stuff? Yes. Oh. Yeah, bitch. Like witches and dragons. And Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> yeah, he would be in it. Matt Damon would be in it. Mm -hmm. um, I would be in it. Of course. Probably about 100 pounds lighter though. I'd be like a size four. Be full Robert Wilson. Why not? It's perfect. <laughs> okay. Plus size protagonist. Uh huh. Robert Downey Jr., Matt Damon, fighting for my attention. I'm on a dragon. The city's on fire. Yeah. They're like my plus size queen. My play, they're like, <laughs> my plus size liege. Yeah. My plus size lady. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> what advice do you have for aspiring Give content? Up. <laughs> Give up. There it is. Stop on your head. <laughs> but what other advice did you have to give for aspiring content creators that want to, like, Gain traction online, but don't want the life sucked out of them. Oh, have or a plan is the, B. Have a plan B. Please have a plan B. Keep that job at the bank. Yes. Keep, if you have a real job, keep it. Mm -hmm. The internet shit should be a side hustle until it becomes big enough where it's a main hustle. Mm -hmm. Do not quit your job. The reason that I did all this was because I had just signed with an agency. I had the promise of future income and I literally got fired. Mm -hmm. I would have still been working at the bank until I was making six figures a year. Mm -hmm. You know, like I wouldn't have been irresponsible with that because there is something so invaluable in having a college degree, having real life work experience under your belt and then doing the internet shit. Mm -hmm. The people who started when they were 16, it f***ing shows, you know, mm -hmm. I don't just make sure if you're going to do this, that it's like you're serious. Because it's a job mm -hmm. and there's no boundaries. You know, you give all of yourself or you give none of yourself. Mm -hmm. Did you have, do you have a plan B currently? Like if something happens tomorrow, you attach yourself to the wrong yeah, life. Yeah, myself. <laughs> That's solid. No, my plan B is... Uh, you still got that college degree. Yeah, you know, yeah, you know, actually know, I was thinking about this last night. Not myself, but uh, my plan B is uh, I'd go back to school and I'd get a, a mm -hmm. master's and a PhD in Spanish. I'd be a Spanish professor. Oh, Spanish teacher? Mm -hmm. Can you imagine your Spanish teacher is... Kombucha girl? Yeah, kombucha girl. Yeah, bitch, get into it. Yeah, kombucha niña. Professor. Ni niña de la gran kombucha. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't take Spanish, I don't know. I, I went to a school that was like 98% white people, like very mm. tiny little school. I didn't take Spanish because I was like, no one speaks Spanish, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> That's actually not a real language, so. Yeah, I was like, okay, yeah. <laughs> Might as well take Klingon, right? Uh, Sp <laughs> Spanish. <laughs> yeah, because I was like, oh, people come to America to learn English, you know, it's fine. And then I entered the workforce and left my small town, and, and I was like, fun. I was like, oh, I f***ed up. I, I took two years of French that's going to do me and nothing. No. Everyone in high school thought they were being so fancy and they were like, I'm taking French. You will never use that. Mm -mm. Yeah. 
You need to learn Mandarin or Spanish, people. Mm -hmm. Figure it out. But with that, that is the last of my cards and the last bit of time we have today. But, oh, thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> thank you for joining me on this ride. And as a thank you for coming today, I wanted to give you a little parting gift. You've actually oh, been Jesus. holding it this whole time. Oh, it's my cup! Yeah. I know they take the sleeve off. Oh, my God! The original White Boys of the Month. I heart BTR. BTR was, actually, I was a Kindle girl. Yeah, big time summer, right? Big time the, ah, ah, ah. Was that your first um, concert? No. No. My first concert was seeing the cast of American Idol in 2009. Oh. <laughs> that, that feels like a different thing. I saw them at the Woodlands Pavilion in Houston, Texas. Oh. It was the American Idol cast, and then the second concert I ever went to was Justin Bieber at the Houston Rodeo. Mm. What do you know about that? Nothing. You don't I'm, know anything about I wasn't there. I can't comment or speculate. <laughs> I cannot speak to the events that occurred on that yeah, night, yeah. unfortunately. <laughs> I was at home. You can check my Twitter. You can check I was, my Twitter. You know, I was seeing a movie with friends. I have the receipts. Well, this is so puss. Thank you. Yeah, a little cup. I, I, was, I was like, well, you know, what's the essence? And I was like, I'll give him a throwback, you know? Yeah. So like the now, big did time you rush. Make this? I did. I made that little cup for you. You bought it and you put the paper in yeah, it? Yeah, I printed it off. I had to get all the little designs right and stuff. If I were to put this in the dishwasher, what's happening? I don't know. Let's find out. <laughs> Time will tell. I mean, like I, I, we had some of those cups growing up, and they, they never made it far. So, well, you know, it's you a know memento. What? I cannot promise how long this will last, but I will use it. Yeah. So thank you. <laughs> but yeah, with that, that is the end of the time we have. Uh, what do you have coming up? Where can people find you? Because I'm, they're all following you anyway. But in case there's someone out there, I am Brittany Broski. You can find me on LinkedIn, Reddit, <laughs> Yelp, Goodreads, Wattpad, Wattpad. No, you can find my podcast, The Broski Report, uh, called The Broski Report, on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Music, wherever you listen to podcasts for you weird Google people, Google podcasts. You can watch my interview show, Royal Court, on YouTube. We've had Orville Peck on, Gross, Hassan Piker. Go check that out on my YouTube channel. I also upload weekly YouTube videos on that channel as well. I also am starting an OnlyFans with Madison. Mm -hmm. <laughs> later today because mm -hmm. we're in Vegas we're uh, pushing out content so love you guys and thank you for having me and you can find me right here on YouTube make sure to like comment and subscribe so you don't miss any of the interviews and tune in next time whenever we have somebody else and... somebody, please welcome to say somebody else yeah that's a good drag name actually like your drag name is somebody else like, welcome, welcome to the stage somebody else welcome to, welcome to the stage yeah that's actually really great yeah that's up there with an ally yeah. So again, you ever start once you get season seventeen when you get the call? Well, girl, when I get the call, I'm gonna be on the show competing. That's what I'm saying. Like, that's um, the name you pick. Okay. Yeah. Shit. I need to start preparing now. <laughs> get your package together. That's no, okay. You'll be an early out. They're just gonna use you for storyline clicks. <laughs> they're gonna get me for the publicity of it all. Then they're mm. gonna be like, killer. Yeah, you're the, you're the TikTok twins of that season. You know, yeah. just uh, bring in. No comment. But yeah, till then. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs>